Hello everybody. Welcome back to my office. It's been a little while. Been pretty busy, but uh, got something in the mail not long ago. Something quite a bit different than I've ever used. Um, wasn't sure if I was even interested in these things, but I figured I'd better give it a, a look just to find out. So this is the King Groon KP3S Pro 3D printer. I just thought I might test these waters out. Anything that has some potential to improve the shop, you just never know. So I want to make it clear right off the bat, I am not an expert on this subject at all. All I'm doing is showing you what it looks like for a newbie to get a 3D printer to set it up and uh, well we're gonna find out how easy it is to make some things. Now this machine comes 95% uh, completely put together and they say it takes about 15 minutes to uh, complete the process and I would say that's correct for the mechanical side of things you know for for putting the gantry on that, that's pretty much all you have to do uh, but I want to say that one of the most important parts of setting this machine up is leveling the bed if you don't level the bed and make sure the gantry arm is uh, is level and the bed is level then you are not going to be able to print properly you're gonna have all kinds of mistakes on there so but that being said it's easy to do it just takes a little bit of time and the tool used is a piece of A4 printer paper that's all I'm using there and that's the space between the uh, nozzle tip and the bed the thickness of A4 paper which I think is between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02 millimeters if I recall correctly. And the process is just going from corner to corner and then to center and uh, I did a little bit of cross-checking back to uh, different corners as well. Just making sure that uh, spacing is even throughout. Now that's a little bit different look. Uh, King Groon sent me a PEI plate as well, which uh, originally it comes with a glass bed. And what you're looking at there is that PEI plate, which is actually uh, magnetic. So it sticks to the uh, to the machine magnetically, and then it's bendable, so it helps you get your your end product off of the plate because it's uh, well I found the uh, the items to be stuck on there pretty good now if you see the silver bar going across there that is a uh, a guide rail and that is on the uh, X and Z axis and that eliminates the uh, the nylon wheels that you find on a lot of these things apparently and it's just a more consistent uh, guide that doesn't wear down um, again that comes on the X and Z axis which is uh, the side to side and the up and down uh, X is side to side and Z is up and down now those guide rails do not come on the uh, the Y axis which is frontward backward um, I'm not sure why it doesn't it seems like it should but maybe that's part of keeping the cost down it they are offered as uh, accessories and I did uh, get those accessories with this machine they were, it was provided to me with this machine uh, and one of the, the first things you have to do before you upgrade the Y axis is to print out these uh, these little plastic jigs that uh, basically line up that uh, rail properly now, I'm not going to show you the upgrade process because that's not what this video is about. 
this video is about basically just the introductory to to a 3d printer from a new guy perspective and that being said that printed out with no problem whatsoever look at that that's pretty nice I printed out two of those and yep they are identical which is good because they're from the same file along with the software uh, there are some printable files I think there's a chess piece a rook perhaps uh, and there's this little little guy that I'm printing out here cute little thing I'm not really sure what its purpose is other than uh, being a cute little I don't know cat toy maybe but uh, I'm using PETG as the filament on the green and black versions of these that you're going to see and PLA for the white one For those of you that don't know, uh, they're just different filament materials and they require you to set your uh, the bed heat and the filament uh, extruder heat at different levels. That's all done on that little keypad that you saw earlier. And this is sped up to uh, 10 times normal speed just for your viewing pleasure. And there's normal speed. And like I said, that was PETG, as is this. PETG, I believe, is just a little bit harder of a substance, of a filament. It requires uh, a little bit more heating up. It seems to print very nicely though. Looks pretty good, right? Nice and clean. And I think I didn't turn on the recorder for the white one, but uh, I'll show it at the end. And again, that was PLA. This is PETG, and this is going to be a little miniature milk crate. That's a purchased file. I think I paid 95 cents for it. So while this milk crate is printing out, I'll talk a little bit more about the machine. I um, already talked about the linear guide rails on the X and Z axis. I would like to see it on the Y axis also as, uh, you know, factory added instead of an accessory, but that's a small drawback. Um, the direct drive extruder is based on the Titan extruder. It's got a 3.1 gear ratio. Um, it prints in uh, PLA, PETG, um, all the way up to ABS. Um, pretty cost effective. It's around $200 right now, up to about $250. Um, I understand that's a pretty good price. The assembly was a piece of cake, really. No problem there at all. It's nice and quiet too, I gotta say. Um, the video makes this sound much noisier than it actually is. It's, you basically don't even notice it uh, in the office running fairly close by. 
but I've got the camera and the microphone very close to, me, to, uh, to the machine. That's why you hear it so much. Uh, the print volume is 200 by 200 by 200 millimeter, which is pretty decent. And I want to say it's a very stable machine. Um, you see the bed movement, the arm movement, you know, the gantry back and forth and and all that. Uh, there's no uh, wiggle or wobble or anything like that on the machine itself. The table doesn't move. It's, uh, I'd say it's built very well. Now what it doesn't have, which uh, is, is interesting to me, I've seen other 3D printers that have uh, two different um, gantry supports on either side. This just has the one. Um, that would be the, the Z axis. There's only one tower. Um, doesn't seem to be a problem. Like I said, it's, uh, it's well built. But if, if you have experience with these things and, and you notice that, I just wanted to point that out. And like it says, the uh, product link is in the video description, and I will put more details uh, also in the video description. I'd like to thank you for watching. And please have no worries, there's more woodworking videos coming soon. Until next time, God bless and Semper Fi.